What's going on all my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. And welcome back to another installment of my Martin Scorsese Director's Marathon. And in today's review, I'm taking a look at his 2016 Christian drama, Silence. So Silence was released in 2016 it is an adaptation of the novel of the same name written by I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce his name but based on a novel that Martin Scorsese wanted to adapt for years he finally got to make this movie and it was released in December 2016. The movie while a critical smash did disappoint at the box office and the disappointingly no low numbers was so alarming for Martin Scorsese that he's now embracing streaming services because silence bombed so bad and that's why we got the Irishman and it's rumored that his next project uh, is going to be released on Netflix as well. So what do I think of silence? Let's find out together. So in silence, two Jesuit priests travel to 17th century Japan, which has under the Tokugawa, forgive me if I pronounced that name wrong, under the Tokugawa rule, banned Catholicism and almost all foreign contact. And this movie stars Andrew Garfield, Adam Driver, and Liam Neeson. I'm gonna say it right off the bat, I love this movie, silence is probably among Martin Scorsese's more underrated films between Silence and Bringing Out the Dead for me. Surprised this movie didn't get any Oscar nominations because it surprisingly didn't and I think if this movie got more Oscar nominations I think I think more people would have gotten into this movie a lot more probably and yeah this movie I think is does a powerful job at showcasing uh, the Christian experience especially at that time I'm not that familiar with Japanese history but from what I understand this movie is historically accurate in showing some of the Christian persecution that was going on in Japan during that time when they didn't want any outside influences in that country so this movie does a powerful job at showing the suffering of Christians and their willingness to remain devoted in their faith regardless of the problems that were going on, regardless of what's going on and the fact that you know, if they still remain devoted they might end up being killed for it. That's always been very fascinating seeing devoted Christians suffer for the sake of remaining loyal to God. That's something that you see in the Bible a lot and a lot of the, the apostles after the death and resurrection of Christ where a lot of them were persecuted and killed uh, for the faith as well. So you get to see that reflected in this movie Silence as well. And the movie does it so intensely as well. It does it in such raw fashion. Uh, the movie is very, it's one of Scorsese's more violent films. He doesn't shy away from violent imagery. That's probably why he was the best director to helm this film. Because he doesn't hold anything back. He did not make a sanitized movie about Christian suffering. Because that's just not Martin Scorsese. Like he shows some of the raw violence in a lot of his films, like in his gangster epics, and they even dove into it decades prior with Last Temptation of Christ uh, we get to see a very distinct version of the story of Jesus in a unique manner and it can get brutal sometimes as well so you get to see that with silence and like with Scorsese's best films this movie is beautifully shot the movie considering its excessive runtime two hours 40 minutes while it is slow I do feel like it is warranted because this movie commands your undivided attention and seeing what was going on. You get to see these priests go out to try to convert some people and get them closer to God, but then you get the Japanese forces that don't want this happening and a lot of people end up suffering in the process. And what I love about silence is it doesn't paint Christianity as this oh when you believe in God and confess Christ 
your life is perfect because that's what a lot of Christian movies fall in that trap because even when you're a Christian life isn't perfect and silence shows that because a lot of Christians in that film d did lose their lives because of their faith and you get to see that in such brutal fashion and even the priest characters aren't depicted as perfect either like the main priest in this film played by Andrew Garfield is a character whose emotions run all over the place because of what's been going on uh, the fact that some of the people that he's become close friends with in this movie he watches get killed and he, he can't do anything about it unless he denounces Christ. They're saying if he if the priests denounce Christ, they won't kill any more Christians. So you have legit conflict in this movie. And also throughout the film, he also questions God as well. Like, why is he allowing this suffering to happen? When And why isn't he, like, sh why is he silent all the time and stuff? And so, yeah, you get legit conflict, you get genuine drama that characters go through, that religious people go through, uh, that some legit conflict, and you get some doubt in there and fear, but you also get some hope, and you also have genuine faith at the same time. And then the decisions characters make and consequences that they make results in whether their faith is strong or not they can get through these trials and tribulations. And I think silence is a beautiful deconstruction of Christianity as a whole. I think this movie did a great job of showing what Christians go through, what Christians feel when they're down on their luck, but you also get to see the hope a lot of Christians go through as well. And this movie did it on an interesting angle too. I'm not gonna, this is a non-spoiler video, but it definitely ended in a different manner than what I expected it to be because of the way it was set up. But it definitely ends on an ambiguous note where it definitely leaves you thinking about the fate of Andrew Garfield's character or not. And I definitely have to respect Martin Scorsese for that. He definitely did a great job of going through all the various trials in Christian life and he definitely showed that in this film and it was very crazy that he directed silence after doing the wild and excessive and self-indulgent Wolf of Wall Street and he directed a more down-to-earth for all Christian movie that's one of the best Christian films that's come out in recent years because of how genuine everything is it's definitely a step up above something like God's Not Dead, a terrible Christian movie that I don't recommend at all. Silence shows real weight and emotion and stakes. And I gotta give Scorsese all props for that. Andrew Garfield is fantastic in this film. It's easily one of his best performances. I've always wanted to root for Andrew Garfield in movies, even though he gets flack for the Amazing Spider-Man films. He is legit great in those films. The fall in that is bad scripts. But he's great in this film. You definitely get to see a multi-layered performance that he gives. And he just commands every scene that he's in. It's cool seeing Adam Driver in here. And then Liam Neeson, who plays a very flawed character. A priest that inspired Garfield's character, who has since denounced Christ. And so... When his character comes in near the end of the film, it becomes heartbreaking, not just for Garfield's character, but for the audience as well, who wants to see some hope come in the worst of these situations. So, th this whole movie is very emotional. This movie is very brutal. There's a lot of powerful moments in there, but I think for Christians watching Silence, I think this movie does a great job of showing the Christian experience well, you get to see the suffering that a lot of Christians go through, especially during that time, and I guess some Christians go through it today in some countries where they're oppressed and stuff. And this, this movie is very brutal to watch, and it's one of Scorsese's most passionately directed films. I gotta give him props for him taking like 30 years to finally get this story right and get it adapted and made into this really epic movie with powerful moments in there. 
It's got one of my favorite performances ever from Andrew Garfield, and I think this movie did a great job of showing just the Christian experience from the hope, the faith, to the suffering and doubt. But it's, it rings in all the right emotions, and it's one powerful two-hour, 40-minute movie. Such a criminally underrated film, and it is definitely worth checking out if you're a hardcore Martin Scorsese fan, or if you want to see a Christian movie done right in the 21st century, go check out Silence. I'm giving it 5 out of 5 stars, and on the 100-point scale, it's getting a 95 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of Silence as part of my Martin Scorsese Director's Marathon where I review his complete filmography from his directing debut to his most recent film. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're a diehard fan of Martin Scorsese and you want to check out some of my past reviews, I'll leave a link in the description below for a playlist of all the Martin Scorsese films I've done on this Director's Marathon so far. I reviewed most of Scorsese's films, and I have one more movie left in his marathon. I reviewed all of his biggest movies, such as Goodfellas, Casino, Taxi Driver, Gangs of New York, Shutter Island, Hugo, The Wolf of Wall Street, Raging Bull, to some of his more obscure films, such as Bringing Out the Dead, Cundin, Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, After Hours, The Last Temptation of Christ, Cape Fear, The Age of Innocence, Who's It Knocking at My Door? and many, many more. I have one more Scorsese film left to cover in this marathon, so if you want to catch up on my past reviews, check the link in the description below to see more. Also, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified of my next Scorsese video. Like I said, I got one more Scorsese movie left to cover in this marathon. I can't wait to share my full review of this film for you guys. I previously tackled it on a quick take when it first dropped on Netflix. And now I'm going to post my full review of The Irishman. Definitely look forward to that video coming out very, very soon. And also in my review of The Irishman, I'll also reveal the next director I'm going to be tackling in a director's marathon, finishing when I finish Martin Scorsese's filmography. So definitely look forward to that video coming very, very soon. But if you've seen Silence, let me know down in the comments below. Would you follow the film? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, trailer reactions, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope y'all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!